let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for today. Thank you because this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the prophetic word that we do not lack in this place. Thank you for continuous download from heaven. Thank you for unveiling. Thank you for revealing. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for opening eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you adoration. Thank you for the things that you are doing in the lives of your people. We just want to give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much, Lord, because no one who have been talking about transformed thinking. Why? Because they want to transform lives. Father, I pray to you. Oh, Lord, my God, why? The reason why you've kept on repeating it and repeating it and repeating it is so that we can hear, we can hack him, we can respond, and then there'll be a change. Because the words we ignore cannot work in our lives. Therefore, Father, I just want to thank you this morning. Thank you that that change will take place. Thank you that that turn around will occur. Thank you that for that manifestation. And thank you for acceleration of manifestations. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to go to our Bible. As we'll be looking at scriptures from Romans chapter 12, from verse number 2. Romans 12, from verse number 2. What does it say? I'm reading from the New King James Version. Romans 12, verse number 2. It reads, and I quote, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse number two, it says, do not be conformed. This is giving us instructions of things that we should not do. Hello, somebody. Say, do not be what? Conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Why is he saying do not be conformed to this world? Did, did you see that? Do not be conformed to this world. Do not yield to it. But be ye transformed. What is this world? There are forces in this world that are making effort to conform us. The way the world thinks should not be the way the church thinks. The way the world thinks should not be the way the kingdom people think. Hello, somebody. Because the Bible says, even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. We should not be thinking in the same way. If you're a kingdom citizen, you should think differently. How should we think? Think according to what God has said. It's called empowered thinking. It's called elevated thinking. It's called the thinking that God gives so that you can experience the promises he has made. Because you can't be thinking the way the world thinks and expect to receive the promises that he has made. So if you, it is a choice that we have to make. Do we want to remain? And okay, I have heard. Okay, they say we should change the way we think. Well, this is the way I was born. This is the way I grew up in my village. This is the way I don't think. And then you remain at that same position. But God says, don't be conformed to this world. What was the world? What is the world? The, the, the systems of this world. 
the way people generally think, the way people think. Because all you need is to give him an inch, it will take 10 miles. If you yield a little, get onto it. Don't be conformed. He said, but be transformed. I've mentioned to her, what does it mean to be transformed? An internal change. A total change. It's not just, oh yeah, today I'm changing the way. It's something happening to you deep on the inside. A change taking place that is irreversible and permanent. And you can't do it on your own. There must be renewal of mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? Refurbish the mind. Renovate the mind. Cause a total change. Renewal of mind. So that you may prove what is that word? Good. If you ask everybody, do you want the good? Everybody say, yes, I want the good. But you can't have the good without renewing the mind. Renew your mind so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And perfect will of God. Living, New Living Translation says, let's open to it. Romans 12, verse 2. It said, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Don't copy those behaviors. Don't behave the way they behave. Don't talk the way they talk. Don't act the way they act. But let God transform you on the inside into a new person. By doing what? By doing what? Changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. Which is what? Good. And what again? Pleasing. And what again? Perfect. I want us to look at what I've entitled to this morning. The spirit mind connection. The spirit mind connection. What does that mean? The spirit mind connection. Romans chapter number eight. The spirit what? Mind connection. Romans chapter number eight from verse number five. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on what? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on what? Things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded or to be fleshly minded will produce what? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want us to go there. I want to examine that verse very closely. For those, meaning not everyone. For those, meaning those who choose to do that. For those, as many as are willing to do that. You have a choice in the matter. God cannot force anything upon you. God just grab me and change me. He doesn't do that. It is Satan who does that. You need to yield. And God will walk. It's called partnership. Your yielding will allow him to come into your life to walk. God does not impose himself. I'm going to share with you three nuggets this morning. Three. For to be carnally minded will produce what? Death. But to be spiritually minded will produce life and peace. Which one do you want? Death or life and peace? Which one? Is there anybody who wants death? Nobody wants that. But it says, if you are thinking carnally, if you are thinking fleshly, it will produce what? Death. If you are thinking the way the world thinks, it will produce what? Death. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life 
and peace. I want life and peace. So if I want life and peace, then I need to make some adjustments. Hello. Let me say this. Do you, have you noticed all of us who walked into this place? Did you open the door when you are walking in? Or there was no door? You just walked in. When you go to a particular door, what do you do? You open it. So that door was like what? A gateway between what? Being on the outside and then being on what? On the inside. Supposing you got there and you stood and said, well, maybe a pastor should come and open the door for me. Somebody said, what are you standing with that? He said, no, I'm not going anywhere. The pastor should come and open the door for me. What do you think will happen to you throughout the service? You'll be outside. Outside the blessing. Outside the world. Everything that God wants to do. In the same way, if you just stand and say, God should just come and do everything for you. No. No. God wants to walk with you. So note this. Listen to me. There's a role the mind is playing. He said, for to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Our mind is the gateway between the flesh and the spirit. If you have not grown, if you have not developed, you think you are just body. And you take care of the body. Oh, I want to dress very well this morning. I'm going to church and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to a wedding. What dress? Want to look. And then even for women, sometimes we get people to come and make us look good. And they can spend hundreds of dollars doing that. And then you look at yourself in the mirror. I think I look good. Then you, 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 you ask if you have someone. Oh, uh, what, what do you think? Most of the time, I don't, I don't know whether they ask the, the husband because the man is not. He said, uh, "Darling, do I look good?" He said, "What are you saying?" Uh, you know. But they ask, "Do I look good?" He said, "Yes, I think you look good. Yes, you look good. You look good. You put the pancake. You put everything. You wear the dress." To make yourself look what? But what are you taking care of? The flesh. The body. This body you will live here. You are not just body. Tell your neighbor say you are not just body. Tell your neighbor say you are not just body. You are not just flesh and blood. There's more to you. Than flesh and blood. Then now ask your neighbor, say, then who am I? Now answer, say, I'm spirit. I'm a spirit. I have a mind. And I live in a body. You are first and foremost a spirit. And when you live here, your spirit will depart and go back to your creator. Who is also a spirit. Hello. Somebody said Baba is dead. Look at Baba. No, no. It's the house that Baba lived. That Mama lived. Or so and so lived. And what happened is this. And when he has completed his time here. He will remove that jacket. Remove that house. And then he will leave it. What? Here. But the real person will depart and go before God to answer to his creator the way he or she has lived his life. But why here? Remember, you are a spirit. You have what? A mind. And you live in what? A body. So your mind is the gateway between your spirit and your, and your flesh or your body. Repeat after me. My mind is the gateway 
between my spirit and my body. It's the gateway. Between your spirit and your body. So he says, when you are, when you are fleshly minded, what happens? It produces to produce what? Death. But when you are spiritually minded, it will produce what? Life and peace. Remember, don't ever forget this. I'll repeat again. Your mind is the gateway between your word and your word. And in addition to that, is the gateway between the physical realm and the spiritual. In the physical realm, you see things taking place in the physical. But in the spirit realm, you need spiritual eyes to see them. But the mind is the gateway. Hello, somebody. Now, your mind is also the gateway or the doorway between the natural side of life and the supernatural side of life. Your mind is the gateway. So, whichever part you yield your mind to will determine the extent of what you will experience. So, if you yield your mind to the natural, then you experience more and more of what is taking place in the natural side of... If you yield yourself to the supernatural, then you experience what? The supernatural side. Amen. Amen. There's nothing like I can watch anything. I can do anything. And they don't have consequences. Hello, somebody. Oh, uh, look at what I'm watching. Be careful the movies you watch. Be careful the things that you watch. Because whatsoever you set your mind to will eventually what? Enter your spirit. It, remember, is the door, doorway or gateway. Let's go back to verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds. Set their minds. Set their minds. There was a time in the U.S. some people committed very terrible, you know, uh, uh, this mass murder, mass shootings. And they were investigating. What, is, what caused this? Why did this person, seemingly a good person, why did he do that? Why did they do that? Then by investigation, they realized that they've been watching a lot of very violent movies where there are lots of killings and everything like that. They've been watching a lot of that. And what were they doing? They were setting their minds on those things and eventually those things entered into their spirit. And the moment it enters into your spirit, there's no force on earth that can stop it from manifesting the natural. There's nothing. If you've been watching, for example, say the dog, it cannot affect me. You've been watching, you know, all manners of things. Whatever you spent your and set your mind to watching, eventually we enter into your spirit, man. We enter into your spirit, man. This is so powerful. Uh, and let me go ahead and further explain this to us. Let me take you to two scenarios in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And I'll take us to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Hello, somebody. Matthew chapter what? Chapter 16. You can put that. Oh, I've been watching this. I've been watching that. Be very careful what you watch. Be very careful what you set your mind to. Be very careful the movies you've watched. 
Somebody said, and can I say this? Many of those things have spirits behind them. And if, for example, you're watching, you said nobody will know, and you are watching them behind the curtains, they will eventually start to impart your life and influence your environment. So if you want to be a spiritual giant, and you are not investing into God's word, and your relationship with God, if you want to experience super, the supernatural power of God, and you are not investing your time in God's word, in prayers, and in the world, and you say God will just look at you and smile, and then just zap it. Wow! I'm sorry to disappoint you. It doesn't work that way. Oh, I know, Baba, I know Daddy Pastor is praying for me. Oh, he's a spiritual. In fact, I called him at about 1 a.m. and said he was praying. Roba Baba Sheliba. Oh, I just love. He loves to pray. And I know that he's praying for me. There's no doubt whether I, that is the. If you are the only person I'm spending time praying for, and you are doing what? Nothing. My 100% grace multiplied by your own zero effort. What will it produce? But Matthew 16, from verse 16. Very beautiful story. Oh, 16. I mean from verse number 13, sorry. Let's quickly go. Jesus came to this region of Sister Philippa. He asked the disciples saying, who do men say that I am? He, he asked the disciples, who do men say that what? The men there are those on the outside, the crowd, those on the streets. Those who they've been hearing about me. What are they saying about me? What do they say about me? And then, in a, in a, yes. And they said, some say it was what? John the Baptist. And some what? Elijah. And others what? Jeremiah. Or one of the... Obviously, they didn't know him. And then he now said, now, now, let me now turn to you. You have been with me. You have spent time with me. Who do you say that I am? And thank God for Peter. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I say you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are my... What did Peter say? He said, you are the Christ. He identified, he didn't just say you are a prophet. He didn't just say you are what? You are the most powerful preacher in town. He said you are the Christ. What does it mean of that? You are the, you are what? The anointed one. You are the Messiah. The word Christ is Christos in Greek, meaning the anointed one. It is the word Messiah in Hebrews. He said, you are the Messiah that the entire world is waiting for. And Jesus now said, bless what? Jesus answered and said, bless are you, Simon. I can imagine when Jesus said that to Peter. He said, oh, all these young boys, I hope they are listening. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, because we are old here, it doesn't mean that people should not respect that. Some of us are, you know, because he was the oldest amongst them. At this time, History has it that he was about maybe in his mid-50s compared to John, a teenager. And Jesus put all of them together. Why did he do that? Because in the last days I'll pour my spirit on all what? And the young men shall what? The, the young men shall see visions. And the old men shall what? Dream dreams. What does that mean? The young men talking about insight. I mean, the, the young men talking about war, dreams. The, the, the young men shall see visions, talking about foresight. The old men will dream, dream, talking about war. Here, hindsight, that you need both what? Foresight, and you need what? Hindsight. Foresight is when God is teaching you some things. Hindsight, because of the experiences you have had. You know, oh, I, now I, I, I can't just jump in there. There's a hole here. I need to avoid it. I've had this. But you don't have to wait until you get there to learn from your experience. Somebody said, experience is the best teacher. No! The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Not experience. People may not recover from their experiences. Hello, somebody. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. 
the young men will see what? Vision. Old men will dream dreams. Vision representing foresight. Dream representing what? Hindsight. They bring balance to the community. They bring balance to the church. If the church is full of only old men, 70s, 80s, eventually that church will die off. Why? Because they can't run again. They can't do much. Baba is already old. Well, well, they're singing, the worship team, they were dancing. They, oh, they are doing that. No, an old person will, do, will just be shaking, you know, where he is. Why? The body is already old, you know, 80 something, 90 something. And, but if the church is full of only young people, there'll be lots of mistakes because young people just want to run. They don't want to just, oh, yes, I know it. Ask the young, I know it. And this one, I know it. I, I know it. You don't know anything. You have not gone far. You need to learn to listen to those who, who have also gone ahead. But you need the strength of the young man. You need the strength of the young men. You need the experience of the old men. You need the experience they have gathered from walking with God. I know the character of God. I know the things that God does. I know the things that the way he walks. I know the way he, the, the way he does his things. God does not hide his character from his people. But if you don't take time to know, you may, you know, you, you, you misjudge him. You say some things about him. No, no, no. When you get to, that's what the Bible says. He revealed his word. Character to Moses. But only his acts to the children of Israel. Get to know his character. So Jesus gathered all of them together. Peter answered and Jesus commended him. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven. Who did that happen to? Let's go to verse 23. But he turned. Or 21. In the same discourse. 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from what? The elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third what? The third day. 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Why was why did Peter do that? Thank he was in the flesh. But let me explain it. He already left fishing business. He has joined the ministry. And the ministry is booming. Things are happening. Miracles, everything. People are saying, we want to see the master. I say, you need to see me. And then I know how to get him. Things are happening. Suddenly, Jesus now said, I will soon die. Ah! I dropped the CV three years ago. Where do you want me to go to again? These young boys can get employment. Who will employ me at, uh, at almost 60? If you've been working there and you've grown to 60, it's a different thing. And Peter said, no, 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 you can't go anywhere. You will not die. So what was motivating the thinking of Peter? Flesh. Flesh. But now listen. Listen for that. And Peter took him aside. He took him aside. It's almost like saying, you want to die? You know? Come, 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 come. I need to have a word with you. Don't forget at this time, was about how many years old? Mid-50. How old was Jesus? What? Thirties. So, uh, who was older? <laughs> Peter. He said, come, come, come in the natural. Come, we need to have a word. But, you know, spiritual things are not judged by natural age. Who created Peter? Jesus. <laughs> so he put him aside. He said, I need to have a word with you. All these young boys might not be able to say something. But let me talk to you now. You're not going to die. You're not going anywhere. And Jesus said, why are you talking to me like that? Why are you talking to me like that? Don't you know who am I? Is that what he said? He turned and he said, look at it. 23. 
23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, what? So, who was speaking through what? Peter. But do you did notice something there? That if Peter did not yield to Satan, Satan cannot what, have a access. Because it was the mouth of Peter that spoke. It was the leg of Peter that took what? Jesus aside. It was the conversation. But because Jesus had learned to yield to the spirit. No wonder he experienced the supernatural beyond and above. He recognized that this is just beyond Peter itself. And he started rebuking the spirit. Spirit speaking through Peter. He said, get thee behind me, what? Satan! You are an offense to me. For you are not what? You are not mindful. Mindful. So what led to that? Peter became mind and what? Filled with the Things of the flesh. So the problem was Peter filling his mind with those things and then eventually led to Peter yielding to the flesh. You are mindful. Learn to press the button delete. When thoughts, we've been talking about thoughts. When thoughts come to you and you know these things are not right, don't start to massage them. Or don't start to meditate on them. Don't start to weigh on them. When the thoughts come, and those thoughts, those negative, depressive thoughts, those thoughts that come to you and say this and say that, those thoughts learn to just say, no, you can't come here. You can't come here. You can't have a place here. When the thoughts came, and whenever they will come, and then they will, they, they will tell you, look at the way you are, blah, 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 blah. You don't just go and say, oh, hey, look at, no, no, no. You say, did you notice that Jesus did not say, eh, Peter, let's discuss further. Why did you say that? Is that what he said? What did he do? Immediately. He didn't do it the following day. He didn't do it the following day. Don't open the door for the enemy. They come to knock on your door. And you say, who is that? Can you come in, sit down, take your seat in the living room? We'll discuss. You have given him a room. You have given him an inch. And he will go 10 miles. And he comes to steal and what? Kill and what? Destroy. Learn to press the button, delete. Oh, this is not my Lord. You are not going to make it. No, 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 in Jesus' name, this is not my Lord. This thing that has come, you know, whatever it is, learn to say no. Don't start to die. think about, you, you thinking for about one week or two weeks and three weeks. No, you have opened the door. And Satan comes to steal and what? To kill and what? To destroy. Put up a fight. This is not what God has said concerning me. This is not what his promises are saying concerning me. Reject it. Refuse it. Cast it out. So what was the problem? What Peter was meditating on. His mind was filled with what? He said you are not mindful of the things of but of the things of war, man, maybe Peter does not, you know, is become very busy. It's not hard time to look at the world, but it's been one movie after another. Is anything wrong with movies? No, nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have time for God's word, and that is the one you are really taking time to invest in, you don't have time. Say, have you, did you read the word today? Oh, no. He's been very, very busy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I saw this uh, particular somebody. Uh, uh, the time you are looking, you are spending in that one, can you devote it to spend some time in God's word? 
Because to be carnally minded will produce death. Why? I said something to you. Whatsoever you feed your mind with will eventually enter into your spirit. So feed your mind with God's word. Feed your mind with what? His promises. Feed your mind with his promises. Because with every promise, there's a provision. The problem is never the mountain you are facing. The problem is you not recognizing the promise. Because for every problem, there's a promise. And in every promise, there's a provision to handle the problem. All you need is to locate what promise. But if you have not taken time to feed yourself on God's word, all you see is how big the mountain is, how terrible the mountain is, and you'll be running from pillar to pose. But he turned and said, Peter, get behind me. You are an offense to me. Now, I'll take you to the second one. Matthew again, chapter 12, from verse number 33. Matthew chapter 12, from verse, either make the tree word good, and its fruit is word good, or make the tree word bad, and its fruit is word bad. For a tree is known by its innocent brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth war speaks. A good man, out of what? Treasure of his heart, bring forward. Now, I want us to read it together. A good man, a good woman, out of the good treasure of his heart, of his spirit, brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things so what determines what a person brings forth what what determines it uh, what determines it the the heart Somebody said the heart. It's not the heart. The heart is the soil. Uh, is it? No. It, what determines it is what is being planted in the heart. Because the word treasure is the word deposit. So a good man, because he's depositing something well, good, will bring forward good things. Somebody said this is not very clear. I'll make it plain to you. Can you walk to the bank? What bank do you use? A N Z. Thank you. A N Z. Meaning what? Australian New Zealand Bank. And I am Aussie. Hello, somebody? So you are walking there because you are what? Australian New Zealand Bank is our. Is our. And you say you have come. And say, what have you come? Can you see my passport? They say, yes, we can see that. Can I have about $5,000? They say, what's your account number? I said, no, I don't have any account here. But my passport, I'm Aussie. Can I make withdrawal? They say, ah, but if you have not deposited, why do you want to make withdrawal? He said, no, don't you know I'm Aussie? Don't you know I'm Aussie? They say, ah, ah, please, they say, Take it easy, take it easy. Don't talk. He said, no, I'm going to. What do you think will happen to them? And when the security comes or police come, they say, why are you dragging me? I'm Aussie, I'm Aussie. I'm... Is the Aussie thing the problem? What? No deposit means no, no withdrawal. Somebody said, ANZ is a bad bank. Let's change the bank. What, which one do you use? Oh, it is common. Any money they make anywhere belongs to all of, all of us. This money that they've been making money in, in Perth and in, uh, in what? In Queensland. 
Oh, I'm going to come and well today. You grab your passport again. You showed up there. They say, please now. Is Commonwealth? I'm not, I don't think, I'm a man of big faith. Can I have like $50,000? They say, your account number? I said, no account. They say, but why? I, I'm part of the Commonwealth and the election is coming. I can assure you, I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> anyone that you want. It's Commonwealth. Can I have the money? He said, but we can't give you no account. Okay, I'll reduce it 25,000. 25,000. Please, can I have 25,000? And he said, where's your account number? But why are you irritating me? Uh, uh, let me just have the money and let me go. I, I need to go to some place. Do you think they will give it to you? Why? Because no what? Means no what? No withdrawal. So Jesus... Now say, a good man, out of what? The good deposit of his heart brings forth good things. So coming to church on a day like this, sitting down and listening, being in prayers on Monday, being on the Bible study during the week, you are consistently making what? Deposit into your spiritual account and when those words enter into your heart what happens there is no force on earth that can stop you from bringing forth remember the mind is the doorway he told Peter your mind has been filled that is why you are talking this way now make good deposit into your heart Make good deposit into your heart so that you can bring forth good things. And say, an evil man out of the evil deposit brings forth evil things. So this man, the problem was not just, uh, yes, Jesus called him an evil man. But the problem was the deposit he has been making. The deposit he has been making that is producing this evil things. He now says what? 36. But I say to you that for every idle word... <laughs> Idle word. Word. Idle. What is idle? What? Loose words. The word idle actually means is, is like placebo, which means empty. Empty without meaning. Just talk. Just gist. Talk. Talk, talk, talk. He said, and I said to you, every idle word may me speak, they will give account. In the day of what? Judgment. Verse 37. For by your what? For by what? Doesn't share the testimony on Friday. How she kept saying, I'm going to get to this, I don't want to get to this uh, station. And then I will And get stopped. I'm, I don't want to get there and get stuck. I don't want to get there and get stuck. I don't want to get there and get stuck. I don't want to get there and get stuck. I said, but now, can somebody give me the pin of this card, the work card, the petrol work card, so that I can go and fill it? And then she got the supposed pin. And then she got there, filled the tank confidently. And in these days, when you fill the tank, you will fill it in your pocket. Fill the tank and then got there and then presented the card. And the card did not go. She got stopped. And she now said, wait a minute, I need to change what I should not be talking this way. And God sorted her out. As Jesus said, for by your words, you will be justified. By your words, you'll be what? You'll be condemned. When did this happen? Matthew what? 12. When did Jesus rebuke Peter? 16. So he will not rebuke you without first of all what? Without first of all instructing you and warning you. Say, Peter, why are you behaving this way? I've already taught you. I've already what taught you. Because in verse 16, but I must commend Peter. Because Peter took it in good word. Good. Yes. Supposing I say to you, I said, get thee behind me, Satan, in front of everybody. How many people will return the next Sunday?
But you've forgotten that you cannot be rebuked, then you cannot be correct. If you cannot be corrected, you cannot be directed. The two of them go hand in hand. The right hand, we all love the right hand because in his right hand, the fullness of. But in his left hand is what? Is his hand of correction because God is not one handed. Or else he would have made all of us what? Because we were made in his, in his image. His left hand is the hand of correction, a hand of process. So you know, he corrected Peter. But thank God that Peter took it very well. Be careful what you fill your mind with. I will conclude this message by again reminding us. Watch your thoughts. Watch your what? Watch your thoughts. Because they will become your world. They will become your words. The thought that you receive will bring forth. Especially when they enter into your spirit. In the same way, if you take God's promises concerning your future. And say, it's my birthing season. And you start to meditate on the fact that this is my year of fullness and overflow. And you take God's promise and say, this is what God has promised me. And suddenly, when situations are not looking like it, and then you remember again that he has said that in the face of contradictions, maintain your declarations. In the face of everything not working out, the way you expect them to work out, you remember the promises. When I remember his promises, I shout, hallelujah. When I remember his promises, I shout, hallelujah. You remember his promises. And you start to declare his promises when it's not looking like it. When every circumstance is what? Looking negative. You know, this is what the word of God has said. And if you are very smart, you learn to invite the Holy Spirit to start to brood over the situation and brood over the circumstance and brood over it. And brood over it. Brood over it. Tell me, can creation be more powerful than creator? When you invite the Holy Spirit, you invite heaven to step in. And I can tell you, I can share testimonies again and again and again and again. Huh? So what's your thoughts? What the thoughts you receive? What the thoughts you allow? Somebody said, well, uh, pastor is not here. Uh, mommy pastor is not here. I mean, we can see anything. Uh, you know, it's still the same thing. Because words are significant. Words are spiritual. People do not need to hear or be there. When you release those things into the spirit, they start to cause you to be conformed to what you are releasing in the spirit. That's why you must learn to watch it and cut it. Oh. Cut it off. For by your words, you'll be justified by your words. Become. Now watch your thoughts. They will become your what? Your words. Watch your words. They will become what? They will become your your actions. Watch your actions. They will become your what? Your habit. Watch your habit. They will become your what? Character. Watch your character. They will become your your destiny. Thought is actually the mother of destiny. If you want to fulfill destiny, start by watching your thoughts. Change those thoughts. You change your life. You get to destination. Change those thoughts. You change uh, a land of a testimony that you shared. I, I know of the person in that course that kept saying this is, you know, speaking negatively about the course and the person dropped off and he couldn't meet up and everything like that. And you say, wow, this is what this person has been saying. And what this person has been saying happened exactly to him. Is that accurate? You're, what happened in your, in your, is it your course now, your place of work? Happened there? And it happened. Exactly what I'm saying. Happened there. Happened there. They'll become your destiny. But you know, his thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to God's expected end. Rise up on your feet. Thank him for the word you've heard this morning. Just thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him. Thank him, thank him. Watch your thoughts. They will become your words. 
Watch your words. They will become your word. Your actions. Watch your actions. They will become your word. Your habit. Watch your habit. They will become your character. Watch your character. They will become your destiny. You can't just be saying things anyhow, talking anyhow, and you think they would not have effect on you. Amen. No, 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 no. You can't just be watching anything and be filling your mind with anything and you think they will not affect you. They will. But today is a day that you can make that total turnaround and change. What have you been watching? What have you been listening to? And let me say, you also need to be very careful. Don't let somebody turn you into dumping ground. Anytime they want to talk or say anything, go, uh, let, me, let me call you and then pa, 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 pa. Learn to say, no, I don't receive that. I don't agree with that. I don't receive that. Stop, don't talk like that. Don't talk about yourself like that. Don't talk about people like that. Don't talk about the church like that. Don't say those things. You cut it, you cut it, you cut it, you cut it. You don't encourage it. And when you learn to do that, they won't come to you and be dumping what? Those things on you. They won't come to you. And then it's important because you want to keep your own mind fresh too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't want to receive all those words. Well, praise the name of the Lord. When they collect debt and collect whatever, what did they take you to? Dumping ground. You are not dumping ground. You don't want anybody to just be dumping anything on you. Because you, you are protecting your heart. You are protecting your spirit. You are protecting your mind. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, Lord, I pray this morning. I've heard your word. And I pray in Jesus' name. Whatever wrong thing I've received, whatever wrong thing I've believed, it's time for a rooting out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not allow these things to fester in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am no, whatever is contrary to your promise in my life. You said your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. Whatsoever is contrary to your good, to the acceptable and perfect will, I'm not receiving them again. Father, every contrary thing that I've received concerning my future, concerning my body, concerning my finances, concerning my life, whatever contrary thing I've received, today is the day. In the name of Jesus, start to root them out. 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 I'm telling you, some of you are doing that, and I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it in the spirit. And it's just like you are clearing weed. You are clearing weed. You are clearing those weeds out of your out of your life. You are clearing those weeds. You are clearing those things. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are precursors in the, to, to, to this in this bathing season that will lead to bathing bathing that God has been speaking about bathing that God has been speaking about because he lives I confess tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone hallelujah because I know he holds my future. My life is worth a living just be because he lives. I confess tomorrow because he lives. All fear, all fear is gone because I know my love. 